shockwaves could be heard around the political world last week when David Bratt beat once a young gun, a group of conservative Republicans in the House, Eric Cantor. This small race in Virginia with huge implications has brought to the forefront the battle between the establishment GOP versus the grassroots Tea Party movement. While Republicans in D.C. like Speaker Boehner, Mitch McConnell, and for his primary, Lindsey Graham, talk a conservative game, their actions are anything but. The excuse given for their kowtowing to a failed president that is clinging to a 40% approval rating is that they are focused on the 2014 midterms. Don't make waves, is their motto, all the while ushering in a tsunami of more debt like a Toreador on Valium. If these so-called Republicans cannot hold steady in the fight against job killer and budget buster, the Obamacare disaster, or keep a cap on the ever-increasing debt ceiling before the election, how can we trust them to do anything different if we, the people, hand them the Senate in November? While it's true that controlling the House and Senate with rhino spread about is an improvement over the democratically controlled Congress, that's not the point. There must be a curtailing of this lawless president and what will be his mad dash of executive orders in an attempt to bring about his phony utopia of social justice agenda. There are a few battlefronts that are a must to be won in the last two years of the lamest of lame ducks in American history. The first, but not necessarily first in importance, is immigration. As the American public can see in the latest Obama-manufactured humanitarian crisis of Central American children being sent alone to the United States in an attempt to become dreamers, the future of the Republican Party is also at stake. With the President putting these children's lives at risk without an ounce of remorse, the main goal of Obama's is to usher in an influx of millions of new Democrat voters. While rhinosauruses like Boehner, John McCain, and Lindsey Graham claim that immigration reform is a must and that they will be the guardians against the illegals getting the right to vote, they are either naive or just plain stupid. The catchphrase for the left and the rhinos is giving the illegals here, now, a pathway to citizenship. These pathways will be the golden goose that the Republicans will try to woo to become GOP voters a fool's errand as, they, as the left knows that they are already in their pocket. Massive voter fraud from illegals has gotten many a Democrat elected in recent years. These pathways are the brainchild of one of the slimiest Democrats in the Senate, Chuck Schumer of New York. I can guarantee you that if there is an amnesty bill passed in the last two years of the Obama administration, it will be less than a week before Schumer and the rest of the Democrats aided by progressive groups and an ever-accommodating mainstream media, that they will call for pathways to get the right to vote. We will see a phenomenon not seen for decades, Democrats embracing the Constitution. Schumer and his ilk will claim that it is unconstitutional to deny pathways the right to vote since they have started to pay taxes. Taxation without representation will be the battle cry of the new founding fathers, trying to found an America without a single Republican in power. And sadly, rhinos like McCain and Gramnesty will go along in their ever quest to be liked by the liberal media. And that, my friends, is the end of the Republican Party. While many political pundits claim David Bratt's victory over immigration reform proponent Cantor was mainly about immigration, it was not. It was more about Cantor being along for the ride in Obama's whirlwind spending spree to get this country to $20 trillion in debt. Bratt, a self-proclaimed Tea Party patriot, is in a list of current senators like Texas' Ted Cruz, Utah's Mike Lee, and Kentucky's Rand Paul, as well as Tea Party House members Jason Chaffetz and Trey Gowdy, who actually worry about this country going bankrupt from the insane spending spree it started when the Democrats took over the purse strings back in 2007. Luckily for the Republican Party, Ted Cruz and the others can articulate exactly the danger of this constant printing of money out of thin air and using the Chinese credit card. And you can't take out a credit card from the Bank of China in the name of our children and our grandchildren. At least that's what Senator Obama believed before he got his hands on the credit card. Not only has this cataclysmic policy been detrimental to the 
middle class with higher food and gas prices, it has hindered us on the international front as well. Now that China has us by the cajones financially, we have no leverage to get their help in places like Syria, Iran, and with Russia's aggression on the former Soviet satellite states. The other front that is tantamount for America to be put back on the right track to prosperity, we need a House and Senate that will pull the plug on Obamacare, otherwise known as the Unaffordable Care Act. As we see the future of our health care system unfold before our eyes in the Veterans Administration scandal, long waiting lists, death panels, and overcrowding is the future of Obamacare. Conservatives must be elected this year because the rhinos look at the cash set aside for the implementation of this failed law and see nothing but more power for them. Instead of killing the beast, they want to put a leash on it and take it for a walk for their own political gain, and in some cases, their own pocketbooks. For the GOP to take over the Senate from the cataclysmic and toxic seven-year reign of dirty Harry Reid, it's paramount. But with some primary still to come, we must back conservatives over rhinosauruses like Tad Cochran in Mississippi to bring this nation back from the brink. The lazy D.C. cocktail party circuit Republicans need to be expunged from the decision-making of our future. While the Founding Fathers were brilliant men with unparalleled foresight, they did not demand term limits for the Congress. But they did worry about such power-hungry politicians becoming entrenched and feeding at the trough without looking out for the best interests of our country. James Madison saw the dangers of power in Washington, and he said, The truth is that all men having power ought to be mistrusted. Thomas Jefferson, the principal author of the Declaration of Independence, foresaw crooks like Reed and Dianne Feinstein infesting our government for personal gain. He said, Whenever a man has cast a longing eye on offices, a rottenness begins in his conduct. John Adams shows why we, the people, must create our own term limits by voting out the entrenched in D.C. Quote, there is a danger from all men. The only maxim of a free government ought to be to trust no man living with the power to endanger the public liberty." Unquote. And George Washington summed it up best. The people must remain ever vigilant against tyrants masquerading as public servants. As we see today, coming mainly from the left, there are quite a few tyrants as well as wannabe tyrants waiting in the wings. The upcoming primaries and the midterm elections coming in November are not only extremely important to curtail the last two years of an increasingly destructive president, but it is tantamount for the future of this country. Do we switch to the right track or continue on the wrong track that we've been on for seven long years? The wrong track that if we don't get off of, We'll have another train coming head-on against us for a collision that we will never recover from.